Continuing into the world of logarithms today, we're going to discuss the common logarithm. First, we're going to go over our learning objectives. So the first objective that we're going to learn today is that we're going to learn how to use the calculator to evaluate expressions of a common logarithm. I'm going to show you where that button's at on the calculator. Second, we're going to express logarithms that maybe are not in common logarithm form. We're going to rewrite them as a common log, and then we're going to evaluate them on the calculator. And finally, we're going to solve exponential equations and inequalities applying the common logarithm and the power property of logs. So before we get into those, though, I'm going to give you a little bit of background information. Back when you first started learning algebra and we had some variables in there, variables had coefficients where the numbers that were in front of the variables. Sometimes the, those variables did not have numbers. You were told to assume that they were just going to be ones. Then we got into exponents x to the power of something. A lot of times you saw a number, but when they didn't have a number there, again, you were told to make an assumption that it's a 1. Now you might be thinking, well, the first two have a 1, so maybe the log is supposed to be a 1 here. But that's not where I'm getting out of this. What I'm getting at is that if you don't see a number as a base for a logarithm, there is a number that you're supposed to assume that it is. And that number is going to be the number 10. Now you might be thinking, well, why is it 10 and not 1? Let's think about our counting system. What's the highest number that we count to before we group them up? That would be 10, because our number counting system is a 10. Every time we get to a group of 10, we group them back up, and then we start over with 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So that's why our common log is considered base 10. Now, where is that button at on the calculator? On this TI calculator, you'll see right below the second button, up in the upper left-hand corner, there is an LOG button. That is the common log button. That button does not have a base on it and log LOG stands for logarithm. So anytime you want to do a common log, use that button, type in the number that you want to take the log of, and it'll give you the answer. So here's an example. Log of 5. See, that log does not have a base. So this is a common log that's basically asking us 10 to what power is going to be 5. Let's do this simply. Just grab out your calculator. Right below the second button, I got the LOG. I type it. Take the number that I want to take the log of. And here you get a decimal number. Now the directions may tell you to round. Sometimes they say the hundredths. They might say the thousandths. In this case, we're going to do the ten thousandth. Now do a refresher on what the places are. The first decimal number, that is the tenth. The second decimal place, that is the hundredth. And then thousandth and ten thousandth. So if I look at this number right after, that is greater than 5, which means I would have to bump this 9 up to a 0. Since you bump that place up, you also have to bump this 8 up to a 9, which will leave you with 0 0.6990 for the answer if you are doing it in 10,000th. So approximately. And notice that I used the approximation symbol because this isn't directly equal to it. I rounded it. One more example. Log of 0.3 three or 0 0.3. So again, come over to the calculator, clear out, take the log of the number, hit enter, and again I'm going to round to the nearest ten thousandth, so tens, hundredths, thousandth, ten thousandth, so I look after the number. Again, that number is bigger than five, so I'm going to bump this next one up to a nine. I don't have to carry any zeros over, so I've got point five or negative point five two two nine for the approximated answer here and those are pretty simple use the calculator make sure you round correctly and you should be fine next the change in base formula I've already touched on the change in base formula in the last video might have seen this here log base b of a is equal to log of a divided by log of b what that is saying is that if you've got a base anything else other than 10, if you look at the example here, I've got a base 3, something else other than 10, I can rewrite it in the form of log of the current number, which is the big number there, and oh, divide it by log of the base, the tiny number that you see. So in this case, if I've got log base 3 of 20, 20, the number that I'm taking the log of, is going to go in the spot where the letter A is at. And the little number, the base 3, is going to go in the spot where the letter B is at. So this is what log base 3 of 20 is in common log form. And then again, if you want to figure out what that number is, we'll go right to the calculator. Type in log of 20. Now you do want to be careful here because 
If you don't close this parenthesis out, it's going to divide the numbers inside the parenthesis. So I'm going to close that off to make sure that I'm taking log of 20 and taking that number divided by log of 3. Enter. I get a decimal number. Now the directions here do say round to the nearest 10,000. So tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. Three doesn't tell me to round the eight up, so I'm going to leave it at 2.7268 for my answer. And that's how you use the change in base formula to write something into a common log form and figure out what the decimal value is. So the first two objectives that we had today, fairly simple. Now the next one gets a little bit more complicated. Now we're going to solve some exponential equations and then go into an inequality. We've already solved some exponential equations. These, these equations that we have solved are fairly nice because what we normally tried to do was take the bigger number, in this case here a 19, see if we could write it as 4 to the power of something. Well, unfortunately, 19 is a prime number. There's no other way that I can rewrite this. But what I can do, however, is go ahead and use this idea that whatever I do to the left side of an equation, I have to use to the right side of the equation. In this case, we're going to start with taking the common log. We're just going to take the log to both sides. Now, the properties that you learned in the previous section, such as the product property, the quotient property, and the power property, these all still apply to the common logarithm. So if I've got log of a number to a power, or log base of a number, there's a property that we had there, the last one that I had mentioned, the power property, that if I have an exponent, I can take that exponent, drag it, and pull it out front of the log. So that's what we're going to use here. I've applied the power property. Now you see that I've got X, which is a letter, L-O-G, a bunch of letters. Don't let all of the letters confuse you. Anytime you see log, it is technically just a number. You know, why is that? You can type it into the calculator. It'll tell you what that decimal number is. Now if I want to get X by itself, think X times the number, we would divide by that number. So we're going to divide both sides by the log of 4. Now that I've got x by itself, again, you can go straight into the calculator, type that in just like we did in the last problem with the change of base formula. I'm not going to take the time to get the calculator back out here, but I'm going to go ahead and pick up that number. It's approximately 2.1240. And that's the process that we want to use. So we want to start with log to both sides, after the log, you're almost always going to be applying the power property to get the variables or the exponent out front so that you could solve. Now, not every log problem or exponential equation that you're going to do is only going to have one variable in the exponent. Sometimes they have more than just more than one term in the exponent. So in this case, see I've got 3 r, 3 to the r minus 5 power. Now, I start off with the same idea. I'm going to take the log to both sides. And this time, I'm still using the power property, the exponent, but the whole entire exponent, r minus 5, comes out front. Now I've got a parenthesis there. But our goal is to solve for r. It means I've got to get rid of the log. I've got to get rid of the minus 5. Now, if I pretend that this parenthesis is just the variable itself. I want to get the parenthesis by itself. I'm still going to divide both sides by the log to get rid of that log. Now I've got r minus 5 by itself equal to this log of 4.1 divided by log of 3. Now if I ever want to get the variable by itself and I've got minus 5, just like we did in regular algebra 1, add 5 to both sides and I'll get the variable by itself. Okay, now I finally got r all by itself, but I need again figure out what this decimal number is. I'm going to do this separately, so I'm going to do the log part that log 4.1 divided by log 3 and figure out what that decimal value is. That's going to round out to about 1.2843. Then I add the 5 to it. r is approximately 6.2843. So a little bit more steps involved than it would be if I had just a single variable in the exponent. Now when it comes to solving inequalities, there's really not much difference than solving an equation. 
you solve it with the same uh, focus. The only thing different is that the equation becomes an inequality sign. Now I chose one that's got a few more steps involved because not only are you just going to have an exponent on maybe one side of the inequality or equation, you might have exponents on both of them. The approach still stays the same. I'm still going to take the log to both sides. Now obviously anytime you take the log of something and there is an exponent, power property comes into play. The exponent gets to go out front of the log. So on the left side, the y gets to come out front. On the right side, the 2y plus 1, all of that gets to come out front. So I've just applied the power property. Now, our goal is to solve the variable. Again, a lot of letters. The variable in this case are the y's. We need to get the y's together. There's a y on the left side. There's a 2y on the right side. I need to somehow get them on the same side of the inequality. Now, and as I mentioned before, anytime you see LOG, we're referring to that as just being a number. So if you use the calculator, that would just tell you what that number is. In this case, I've got to get rid of that log 5 because the y needs to come over to the left side. So I'm going to distribute the log 5 into that parenthesis. That's going to give us a 2y times that log of 5. And the 1 times the log of 5, 1 times anything is still going to stay the number itself. So I don't need the 1. I'm just going to leave it as plus log 5. So we're getting closer here. Still need to get the y's to the same side of the inequality sign. I'm going to start with, I'm going to subtract away the 2y. If I subtract that out from the right side, that cancels out the 2y log 5 on the right side. On the left side, I'm going to subtract the 2y log 5. What that's going to give you is, on the left side, it gets long, y log 4 minus 2y log 5 is less than log 5. Now what I want you to notice is that in each of these logs, see how they both have y's in common? Those are common factors. And anytime that you have common factors, you're able to factor them out. So if I factor out the y and leave what I have left over from the logs, in the parentheses, now we've got a single y, and we want to get that y all by itself. So think again, if I got the variable y that I want to get by itself times something, times a number, we would divide by that number to get the variable by itself. And in this case, we're going to divide both sides by this really long uh, statement that's in the parentheses, log 4 minus 2 log 5. Divide the right side by log 4 minus 2 log 5. Again, I'm not going to type all this into the calculator, but if I were to, I type log 4 minus 2 log 5 in the calculator, it would end up giving you a negative number. Now let's think. What happens to inequality signs when you divide by negatives? They flip. So this is not going to be y is less than. It's going to turn into y is greater than. And it's going to be y is greater than the number. So how do I get that number? Again, I come over to the calculator. I'm going to type in what I have on top. In this case, log 5. There's my numerator. Divide it by. Now, I've got a couple pieces in the denom denominator, so I'm going to put all of that in parentheses. So I'm going to open up a parenthesis. Log 4. Close that particular log. Minus 2 log Five. This parenthesis closes that log. The second parenthesis is going to close the entire denominator. So after, as long as I do that correctly, I get my negative 0.8782. So that's solving inequality. So again, very similar to the equations. You do have to be careful with whenever you're dividing by that parenthesis. Is it negative? Because if it is, you're going to have to be careful on switching your inequality sign. Okay, so in review, the first thing we learned how to use the log button on the calculator to evaluate expressions in a common log form. You know where the log button's at on the calculator. You type it in, boom, it spits out the answer, and you're good to go. Secondly, we learned how to take any regular log that has a different base other than 10, write it in a common log form, use the calculator, figure out what the decimal number is. And lastly, in conjunction, we use logs 
and the power property of logs to solve exponential equations and inequalities using that common log and power property rule. So again, there's everything you need to know about the common log.